Nice to meet you. All right. Hey, my name is Andrew Bettinger. I'm the owner of this fine Was the Yaks Cafe. We got um, all sorts of stuff going on here. Lots of amazing people, and I uh, just want to share with you kind of how I got here. So. Um, I guess I'll just start from uh, my senior year in college um, and my brief history in a nutshell before college. Um, my parents were missionaries in Taiwan, so I moved there when I was four months old. And I grew up in Taiwan, absolutely loved it, absolutely recommend it to everyone that uh, has a sense for travel and adventure. You'll find great food, great people. And so that's my upbringing. Um, after high school, um, I traveled the world quite a bit. I went to Nepal, went to Calcutta, went to um, Australia. So I had a lot of fun traveling, uh, doing some fun things. Um, and then I went to college. So we'll start with college. Uh, so when I, my senior year of college, I had uh, just such a desire to really um, burn for something. I really wanted to burn for a mission. I really wanted to have a passion uh, for something, something really to live for. Um, and I thought it was Taiwan because I grew up there. I love the island. Um, I felt like that's where I was going to ultimately return to and was going to have a profound effect on the island in a positive way. Um, I'm a believer of Jesus and I think he's my savior. Or I know he's my savior and I know he uh, really loves me. So that's how I wanted to impact Taiwan was to just bring the love of Jesus um, to Taiwan and uh, various avenues. Um, I didn't want to do the classic, you know, missionary, come to my house, have a Bible study. I wanted to have a, a business. I wanted to really um, integrate into society, completely just turn into a Taiwanese person, you know, so I could just relate and love them. Um, however, that um, vision kind of came to a halt when I went to Taiwan and was really crying out for a broken heart for Taiwan. Um, and through some experiences, I didn't receive that. I, I just didn't feel my heart being broke for Taiwan. I felt like actually it wasn't the place I was supposed to end up. So coming into my senior year, I was kind of confused. I was like, well, Taiwan, I thought was my mission. I thought that's where I was gonna ultimately end up for the rest of my life. But when that uh, was clear to me, it wasn't the place I was gonna be going at, uh, after college. I was really open for anything. So my prayer to the Lord was, Lord, break my heart for something. You know, break my heart for a movement, break my heart for people, break my heart for something, and make it so clear that that I will just um, lay down my life for whatever cause it is. Um, so I went through my whole senior year, really didn't have any sort of draw to any sort of movement, any sort of people. I was just trying to get down with my classes. Um, however, um, one night, one of my friends said, hey, you should uh, come to this meeting. It's, uh, it's about sex trafficking. And I said, wow, I didn't really know what it was, but you know, it's pretty self-explanatory. Okay, trafficking of people, um, you know, sex slaves, and it's a huge industry right now. But I had no idea really anything about it at that point. So uh, I went, I said, okay, sure, I'll go. And so we went. And when I got there, you know, I was like, okay, this is, of course, this is horrible. So, you know, of course my heart's gonna be moved for it. So I didn't really think too much of it. I didn't think, okay, this is it. This is what God was breaking my heart for. Until they showed a movie. And they showed a movie and it was pretty graphic. They told the, you know, 12 and under to leave because it was just very realistic um, to the condition. Of, and they just wanted to show how horrible it was. So I started watching it. And it was weird because in the movie there were so many little signals and signs that were so hinted at me throughout my life but they were all coming out of the movie as far as just names, um, places, and um, images were flashing out at me in such a, a dramatic way that I was like, oh my goodness, this is actually really being highlighted right now. This is something I really need to pay attention to. So I really was watching it. And there's this image I've always had in my heart for women. And that is that they would be free and that they would, and I had this image when I was growing up, I don't know where the image came from but of a girl walking through a field of daisies, just completely free and just being in laughter, just laying and rolling in the daisies. Well, at the end of the movie, that image came up. The girl was walking through daisy and I broke. I, and my friend put her hand on my leg because I, I must have just like gasped or something. And as soon as she touched me, the Holy Spirit just boom, hit me so hard. 
I started weeping out of control. Just weeping, weeping, weeping. And as soon as I thought, and the whole room was quiet, because it was right out of the movie, everybody was quiet in a reflective mood, I was wailing. And, uh, and just when I thought that I couldn't wail any harder, I just wailed even harder. So I had to get out of there. So I left the building, I, I went out uh, towards uh, the basketball course where nobody was. It was at night, it was dark, it was wet. So I just started walking and it was just crazy how intense my heart was feeling for this uh, condition. And for the women, in the, specifically the women that um, were being sex trafficked. And I really feel like that night God gave me a piece of his heart of what he feels about it and what he feels about his, his, his ladies, his princesses. Um, and, he, and his heart completely breaks for this issue because his daughters were never meant to be sold, were never meant to be cheap, and they were, they were supposed to be you know, princesses and queens and, and, and just you know, bringing life to this earth, but yet they um, are being so um, just you know, cut down. So it went from a very like sorrowful cry to an almost an angry cry. I was angry. I was grabbing the ground. I was just I was on the ground at this point, just in the mud, just grabbing the ground, just furious. And I spoke in a in, in a weird tongue that I'd never spoken before. <laughs> and I was just like going with it. And so eventually that passed. And I got up and I was like, oh my gosh, what the just happened to me? Like that was intense. And I I, I said, well. If that isn't God breaking my heart, and if that isn't God showing me what He wants me to go after, I don't know what is. And so I was super excited. Uh, you know, I, I was sad at the same time, but super excited about, oh my gosh, He answered my prayer. He gave me this profound experience of love towards this issue and for, towards His women. And so then it began the journey of, like, how am I going to contribute? I'm, I'm a guy, you know, like. Um, these women are probably have major trust issues with <laughs> guys. I didn't know exactly where to move from there, so I just that that began prayer of like where should I go, and I really got guidance to start pursuing coffee and start pursuing small business and start uh, um, to do go that route, which it didn't really make sense because at first I I had a really good contact in Nicaragua and I wanted to just start a coffee farm and just like make money in Poland. Uh, pull people out of that um, sex trafficking, but uh, and she said, you know, I got my dad's got a farm. You can come. I'll teach him. I'll teach you everything. I'll teach you small grow. I'll teach you large growing um, situations for coffee. You just come and learn. So I thought that's where I was going to go, but I had no peace about it. And my school was in Reading, and ever since I was in Reading, I wanted to get out of Reading. But for some reason, uh, so I talked to the lady from Nicaragua, and she said, you know, just follow peace. Just follow peace, whatever you have. If you're gonna stay in Reading or if you're gonna come with me, make sure you follow peace. So one day I had so much peace about staying in Reading. I was, it was my fifth year in Reading. I thought I was gonna leave right when I got there, but I was in five years. But then all of a sudden I wanted to stay. So I said, I think I'm supposed to stay in Reading. Um, so I had a peace about staying in Reading and I took a long bike ride the next day I had, after the day I had peace and I rolled up on a coffee shop called Yaks never been there heard about it because I was um, in Reading for school and I was like I just I just never had an experience there so I went and got a coffee after my bike ride and after that um, I sat got a coffee a girl from college came sat down with me I had a class with her and she said hey what's going on how you doing and I told her that I just got back from Sweden blah, 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 and she and we had a great talk and I left well she texted me later and said hey come to an interview um, it's at Yaks we're having an opening so you should come. So I was like, well, that's cool. Like right after I have peace, the job pretty much lands in my lab. It's in coffee, it's small business. So I was like, well, this is really lining up. So I go to the interview and she said, bring a book. Usually there's hundreds of people uh, that are coming in for interview. It might take a while to bring a book. Well, the owner of Yax at that time, um, she's still the owner of Yax, now where was Yax? Um, but she looked at me and she said, hey, I want to interview, interview you first, come with me. So I get the first interview, and she pulls me and she said, Andrew, uh, why do you want to work for Yax? I had no good reason. I'd never been to Yax before. So I just told her my experience of like what happened and why I want to do coffee. And she stopped me in the middle of my story and said, oh my God, listen to my story. And her vision was exactly the same. She wanted to use coffee to, and her vision is to, to, to uh, the frail, forsaken, and forgotten. And that was really what was on her heart. So we had a very similar image. So within six months of working for them, an opportunity to come to Shasta just opened up. She said, 
you know, I don't even, I've never done coffee before, I've never done restaurant before, but within six months I, I was managing a store in Reading and she gave me an opportunity to come to Mount Shasta to help her build and open the store. Well, at first I was like, man, I have such a chill life right now, I'm working five days a week, I ride my bike to work, I got lots of friends in Reading, so I was like, ah, no, nah, I don't really want to do it. But it wasn't until I talked to my friend from uh, Sweden and he just woke me up, he's like, Andrew, like, who in six months gets an opportunity to go build a store on somebody else's dime, get all this experience, go and, and, and have this opportunity? Like, you, you would be stupid not to take it, especially since you want to do small business in the future. And, um, you know, the rest of my vision that he knows about, knows about. So I said, okay, doing it. So, packed up my life in Reading in two days, came up here with just some clothes, and started building the store. And uh, I just was blown away by the beauty of this place. I couldn't believe what I fell into. And I managed it for three years, helped um, Yaks build a restaurant in Dunsmere. Came back up after management fell through here. Um, after thinking I would, didn't ever want to do management ever again. Um, and I started managing. And then I, wanted, I had this passion to own it. I was like, well, I can own this place. So even though it was different than my original vision of like, let's go to Columbia, let's start a coffee farm, let's um, bring in street kids off the street, you know, which it was immediate. I feel like God said, you know, follow peace and let's take you on a journey to get there. So um, that's what I really have seen Mount Shasta, the coffee shop and owning a business is being as this is all training. This is all just, a, and, and what a better what better place to do training than Mount Shasta, this kind of coffee shop with people coming from all over the world. Um, I just can't believe how he set me up. I mean, the, I get to walk to work. I live a block away. Um, I'm married now, have a kid on the way. Like, my boss and me always told each other when we came up here, we said, we have no idea what God's doing. Like, we're doing it, like we're sweeping floors, we're pulling shots, but we have no idea what is going to happen up here. And in, you know, four or five short years, I own a business, I am married, I have a kid on the way, I, and, and I live in like the most beautiful place in the world. My brother's here now, my cousin's here now, um, I have the best co-workers, they all work for me, my brother and my cousin. Um, and now I'm getting to partake in the next door. Like I get to do something in that space, like the best corner in Mount Shasta. So I guess like the overall message that I would like to encourage whoever eventually sees this is like, you know, number one, follow peace. Like follow the peace to your heart. Um, it's gonna take a lot of hard work, but at the same time, like when you get focused in on the moment of like when I, because I've had the most intense revelations just sweeping the floor. Like just at night after a long day, just sweeping into my little um, basket. Like I've had, you know, times where God has just met me in crazy encounters of love there. Um, but it's just, it's step by step, you know, I think a lot of people think, I got this big vision, it's got to happen now, let's go, let's do it. And when it doesn't happen right away, um, you get frustrated. You think, oh, I'm on the wrong path, and you go do something else. Well, it's a process, you know, and maybe, maybe this is just my story, so it could be different for anybody else. But, you know, I have, you know, done the simple things, pull a shot, wipe a table, um, you know, lock the door before I go, um, tell somebody how to, like, pull a shot, tell them not to do it that way, do it this way. And it's, it's all been minor, little, tiny things, but it's, it's progressed me so fast. To where you know five years is not a long time and so much has happened um and i don't know how this will eventually feed back into sex trafficking but i know that i'm getting trained here because not only do i get to own a business and be in the most beautiful part of the world and have a really good life like i'm being worked on a lot spiritually like this has been the greatest time of my life but the hardest time of my life absolutely the hardest time of my life because I feel like God is just whittling me down to the bare minimum like he is making me so dependent on him because um, like until the point where my only cry is like God help like God I need you God if, if I don't have 
you, I'm not going to make it. And that's what he wants. He wants us to be that close to him, to where we can hear his like still small voice, and where he can whisper to us, and where we can have intimate moments. So, um, it's such a beautiful journey. I can't. I mean, I, I think at least three times a day, I tell somebody, I can't believe my life. I cannot believe my life. And um, it's 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 really like if you think about it. You know, I'm, I'm a really simple guy. I don't have like incredible talents of any kind. I don't excel in something like you know, that the world would say, ooh, you know. But at the same time, God chose to use me to have this amazing store um, and to be able to love people through a cup of coffee. And so, I mean, I could go on and on and on and on about why I love being here, um, how I feel blessed. But um, I hope that blesses somebody and just encourages somebody to just go for it and to realize that it isn't, I mean, it isn't, it does take some gritty work, but that gritty work keeps you humble. It keeps you approachable. It keeps you at a place where you're um, just on your face before your creator saying thank you and also saying like, oh my God, I'm in way over my head. You better help me out. So... <laughs> Uh, yeah, so um, hopefully in the future this will eventually turn into something where it, it directly um, it directly affects sex trafficking and who knows, I might have already affected like just by a smile, just by loving somebody, they um, could have made a different decision. Um, so I truly believe that. So I feel blessed to encounter hundreds of people a day um, and approach them with love. So. That's really what it's all about. Wow. Yeah. Thank you for your story. I'm Thank gonna you. pan up to this. I like this this saying up here. Yeah. I'm gonna try to find your sign. Take around, take a look. Yep. I'm gonna take the camera you guys and walk it on over. <laughs>